I think this chapter is really important. It's kind of like a keystone chapter, but guess what? I'll probably say that about every chapter in this entire title. What we're talking about in this chapter is cradle-to-grave kind of color management, and really that is important. How many of us out there, myself included, have ever said, this print doesn't look like what it looked like on my monitor, or what I see on my monitor doesn't look like what I saw on my camera, and we want to figure out a way to do this. Now, before we even get started here, let's be honest about this and understand that it is theoretically, scientifically, whatever you want to call it, impossible to really see, if you're going to print, what you can see on that paper on a monitor. You get close, and that's what we want to do. We want to do the best we can with the technology that we have and get color management down as close as we humanly can. There are three ways. The first way is what I would call, it ain't broke, don't fix it, which is not a good way. Well, you know, I bought this monitor. It's a brand new monitor. It's a good monitor. They wouldn't have messed up the color on this monitor. It's not broke. I'm not going to fix it. That's not a good attitude to have. The second one would be to work through your operating system. Now, if you're working on a Macintosh computer, you can go into the system preferences and go into displays and go into color. Or if you're in Windows, it's a little bit longer, but it's there. Go into Control Panels, Display Properties, Advanced, and then Color Management. What happens? You're treated to about 10 or 15 steps that you go through. It will say, look at this. Which one's darker? And you check one. Which one's red? Which one's blue? And you go through this process of working manually to adjust the color. Now, that's better than nothing, but let me mention something about this. The way we, you and I, perceive color is different based on a lot of factors, even what we consume. If you, like me, drink a lot of coffee or caffeine products, according to studies, that can impair your ability to see red correctly. So we're in a quandary here. Our eyes perceive color differently, yet we need a set system. But the third way to me, and you're going to have to throw some money at this, but I think it's the best solution is to use something like a spider. Now, this is the one I use. It's the Spider 4, and if you go out to datacolor.com, they will tell you all about their products, and they have quite a few. Now, hold on to your checkbook, because you could wind up leaving here spending literally thousands of dollars. But if you're looking for something like the Pro Spider 4, the one that I'm using, they run in U.S. dollars about 150 so it's not cheap. But if color management is important to you, I think it is a very good investment. But understand, if you're running with a lot of equipment, thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars worth of printing equipment, and this is your life, you might already know you can spend literally thousands of dollars on this kind of equipment. This for 150 U.S. is actually not that bad. Now, how does it work? Well, I'll show you this one. You don't have to get this particular spider, obviously, and it would be a little bit different for every spider. But I like this one because of its features. So let me go ahead and run through the features of this one real quick. Let me open up the application. Okay, here we are. It's going to ask you a few questions. Number one, have you allowed your display to warm up for a half hour? And that's important. When you turn your monitor on, if you touch it after an hour or so, it's warm. That warmth actually physically changes how color looks. So you need to get it up to a working temperature. 30 minutes is a good thing to do. Lighting conditions that you use must be the same lighting conditions that you work in. I mean, that is really kind of important. I would suggest that if you've got lights directly overhead, you don't want those shining on the screen, but you want to get yourself in the lighting conditions that you use to work. Most monitors today actually don't have display controls. As a matter of fact, if you're using Apple, they don't have any controls on the monitor. Most monitors don't have that anymore. But if you do, you're going to have to set those to default, and then you plug the spider in. It's a USB connection and click Next. Now, we'll ask what you have. I've got an LCD. I've got a couple of monitors, and you can click here to get to a different one. This one's an LCD. Click Next again. Now, Gamma of 2.2 is probably the best one to use, and they say it's recommended. What is that? That's where we perceive detail information in our midtones. Lighter and darker on gamma will change where we perceive those details. And 2.2 is recommended. 6500 Kelvin, that's white point, recommended. That's where the RGB workspace is for white, so I'd recommend you're probably going to leave it there. Most of the time, if you did native, it probably would be 6500 anyway. On brightness, I'm going to take that to LCD recommended. 
and I'm going to turn this one on. It's called Ambient Light. Now this is a feature with this particular spider. The spider has an electric eye on it. And if I click Next, it's going to analyze the light in the room. And I'm going to click the Next button. And it's showing me my white point and my brightness right here. And it's saying, would you like to accept what I see in the room for the ambient light? Or would you rather just keep your current settings? And usually I'm going to try theirs first. Now understand that basically this is the setup for this particular spider. Not all spiders have that, but it's a nice feature. If I click Next again, this is where we'll stop. But you put the spider right here physically on the screen. So you hang it over the top, put it on there. It takes about 15 minutes for it to go through the process. Once it gets done with the process, it creates a ICC profile. And that ICC profile basically creates a color set for this monitor. Now, it's more than just the color set for this monitor. It helps other devices, like output devices, know the color that you're seeing. Now, I will be the first to say that this is not some complete solution, the end game, because we still have problems sometimes with our printers and other devices that we're using, and you can build on the Spider 4, if you use this one, with other devices that will take you to more accurately produce color for printers or for other devices. This is a start, but it is a good start, and I think when you see the before and the after, you are going to be surprised at what you were looking at and what you now have.